first step to underground pipe installation is marking out and laying out everything. You can see here that there are orange marks all over where pipes need to end up, where the trenches will go so the pipes can connect to those places. Prior to this, a lot of calculation has gone into finding out exactly where those pipes need to go, pulling measurements from outside foundations or other reference points. This way we can get those pipes exactly where they need to be inside the building, coming up in walls and things like that. The second step in the process is what I call creating the path, and that's where we actually dig into the ground, create those trenches. Of course, all along the way, those trenches need to be adjusted and measured so that that pipe will have slope as it goes. Creating the path may also include breaking into concrete if we need to bring a pipe up inside of a wall. This one needs to come up in a frame wall, so we're gonna break out the concrete there. That may also include breaking out concrete on a footing so that the pipe can come up right next to a foundation wall. All of that is this process of creating a place for the pipes to go or creating a path. Once that path has been created and we have a place for all those pipes to go, they'll come up where they need to, it's time to install the pipe. I like to lay out all the fittings on that underground just to make sure that I have the right fittings in the right places and I know how I'm going to connect that all together. From there, it's a matter of cutting those pipes to proper length, getting those glued in place, making sure that they're properly bedded and sloped, and moving through from one spot to the next, creating the main lines, running off, doing the branches, and getting those pipes exactly where they need to go. Now the book gives a great note on minimizing pipe and fitting waste. Obviously we need to be conscious about the pipe and fittings that we're using so that we can make the most out of what we have. This includes storing and handling pipes so they don't get damaged. You want to be careful, especially on an underground, that they don't get damaged. Checking measurements and calculations before cutting the pipe to minimize errors. And then double checking that cut before you make the cut so as to not waste any pipe. We want to use as much of the pipe as possible so smaller scraps can be cut into even smaller pieces and used so that we use as much of that pipe up as we can. And it's important to use the proper fittings wherever possible, minimizing unnecessary use of fittings. Now it's important to remember that pipes below ground must use longer sweeps. So 45s, you can see combination Y and 45 fittings. You can do long sweep 90s or combined 45s. But you want those long sweeps. You would never use a Santee on its side or on its back in an underground installation like this because it doesn't provide those long sweeps that we need for this underground drainage piping. Once the pipes are installed, they need to be protected from concrete. Any way that they would pass through the concrete, we have to wrap them so that there's room for expansion and contraction and so the concrete won't corrode those pipes. All of the pipes need to be capped and covered to protect them from other dirt, rocks, debris, whatever, from getting down inside the pipes. Sometimes we deal with other circumstances, like if the sewer at the street is higher than the bottom at the basement floor. We can't gravity drain any fixtures from the basement to that sewer. The sewage ejector can enable fixtures that are below the gravity drain of the sewer in the street because the waste can be pumped up higher and then gravity drain out of the house from there. Other preparations before a concrete floor is poured would include setting a floor drain. The floor drains have to be set so that the concrete floor will slope to that floor drain. So first we'd have to know where that level is for the finished floor. And then make sure our floor drain is down below that by half an inch to an inch, but not too far because you don't want this massive crater in the concrete because the floor drain is too deep or it even gets buried altogether. Another important preparation is to box out for tubs or showers or other fixtures that we need to connect the drain later. So having a tub box like this can keep the concrete away from the pipe and enable us later to hook up that tub with less inconvenience. It's not going to ever be easy, but this will help a lot. Ultimately, the entire drainage system below the floor in the ground will have to be tested and inspected before it is buried and covered under a concrete floor. 